We are uh, preparing to conclude our afternoon session and I invite you to consider the words that have been shared and the practices to see if you have any question, number one, and uh, that's important. Let me clarify if there are any uh, points that you wish further elaboration on, please make that request known to me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, can you say simply that uh, with, with regard to prayer that uh, Prayer, giving prayer, uh, prayer uh, not effective is like uh, hating prayer, selfish prayer. Yes. When uh, well, it when we make a prayer, we're saying um, we are aware of the abundant universe, and we're dedicating our thought and our activity uh, to manifesting uh, wisdom, actualizing the seed of wisdom potential within, and uh, making the choice to continually polish our minds that our activities may benefit all beings. That is um, actually uh, a commitment. It's a, a wave of energy that enters the field and indeed stirs and quickens the seed of awakened mind in every being. When we make a prayer, and uh, intention can be a skanda, because when we intend, I want to have this or that, uh, and I am going to pray for this or that, uh, we can also obstruct the actualization of wisdom and by not noticing the opportunity that is there. So, <coughs> we make a prayerful commitment uh, to attain Buddha mind and release all sentient beings from suffering. Um, so, who is taking refuge in what? and who is making commitment to release beings from suffering. Uh, the prayer is the, the voice that knows, in the relative sense, uh, wisdom is within, and that through skillful methods, the uh, circle of suffering can and is transformed. Uh, so there is a fine line and in the Cherokee way and many indigenous people, you make prayers of thanksgiving because the idea of asking for means that you don't recognize all that you've received. It means uh, uh, unawareness and uh, unappreciation for what is. So we acknowledge and make prayers of thankfulness. And what we, uh, and a prayer is an energy wave. It's a sound wave. It is uh, putting into motion the actualization of human potential to express its awakened state. And uh, sometimes we, uh, human beings, can get uh, some confusion. Um, there's a joke about, uh, it's a, you've probably heard it, it's a common Indian joke in Native communities. And uh, There's this person who's saying, God, make me a rich man. I want to win the lottery. I want to win the lottery. God, I want to win the lottery. I want to win the lottery. And then one day a voice and lightning come out of the sky and said, 
Look, stop asking. You didn't even buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in a sense, our our commitment to actualize the seed of Buddha mind within ourselves and the appearance of self for the benefit of all sentient beings. That's a wave form that stirs people to recognizing and recalling within that seed of Buddha mind and their natural nature. And as such, it propels uh, to the shore that is free from illusion. Um, so I have known people who said, well, why don't you chant for this or that? And uh, in a sense, people focus their minds by chanting. Um, and that's another way. Um, and uh, there are many roads. And also, when we ask for something, we may get it in ways we have not truly anticipated. When we recognize the accomplishment arising, uh, then understanding and skill grow. So one is looking outside, and one is recognizing I publish my body, speech, and action in these ways uh, so that these things may manifest for the benefit of all. Distinction is clear? Yeah, it's a very profound one. Uh -huh. I hear myself saying, Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, I can't be the first one to say something like that. Well, times are different and times aren't different. And kind of walking that balance of um, being real and at the same time choosing what reality I want to happen. Yes. Yes, it is a fine balance. The cultural condition is to think it is this or that, and yet the awakening consciousness is, hey, our thought propels the wave that arises as a particular result. Uh, so the wise practitioner energizes the objective of community and good relationship, human beings showing mutual respect. I, I think maybe it's different now that that's easier to see with the technology which was on camera. Yes. That may be a difference. Mm -hmm. it, it assists people in directly communicating rather than having it filtered uh, for a particular purpose or goal. Goal and gold, because it's also business to shape people's view. Do you want water or Coca-Cola? Now Coca-Cola is making water in a bottle because people don't want Coca-Cola. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we are as human beings waking up, and the awakening is uh, energy that moves through the whole dream. And uh, the wise person energizes the understanding and the love and the compassion that transform suffering. And then there's the issue, well, where do we live? And what do we eat? Uh, and where do we live? 
where we are and how for many people to maintain their homes is very difficult. Uh, where do we live is a, a very potent question. And the root of that question where uh, is within ourselves when we may think that our home is uh, a commodity when in truth our sacred space is our natural state and to recognize wherever we sit a sacred state a sacred state of space then begins to change the dynamic what do we call home um, it's where uh, the fire is it's where we come to make our prayers, where we renew our relationships. So uh, each culture has this concept, like here the peace village is a mother village. And so people return here to make their prayers once a year, come to the fire again. So that's a sense of home. And it's also a sense of uh, understanding. Like we understand that we meet, we understand that our thoughts, uh, the movement of our feet touches the ley lines, and like the spiraling rainbow Taurus ring goes up the mountain into the sky, and great blessings come back, but people can see even more clearly the nature of their heart and mind experience. So, um, the meditation and the short words on the wisdom eye, penetrating insight, observing the heart, are significant uh, because they show us how to see within. When the thought comes from outside, it's, you can feel it almost like a wind. When the insight arises, it's, ah, you recognize it unequivocally. So how do we compassionately respond to the many issues that people deal with? Uh, we can uh, focus on the ideal and to, to drop seeds of wisdom that actualize that ideal and uh, bits of skill that show people how to reconcile even the aggression of war and learn to live again together. You drop hints that, yes, we all want this. It's, we have this in common. Um, and we develop the, the skill to not emotionally uh, become hooked on what have appeared in the past as uh, uh, situations of fear or aggression. For example, um, the person living by the shore and having the good fortune to hear the ocean's roar, may be blessed by its cascading waves and its potential of light that is revealed as bubbles of energy potential. Or the person standing by the shore could think of, oh my gosh, there was an earthquake here or there, it could happen here. Where do you put your attention? What do we choose to energize? Let us en energize the result that is uh, wisdom and life force enhancing. So the plates of the earth, similar to duodecahedron, uh, expand and the consciousness of the earth like the consciousness of our heart, our lungs, our, our stomach, is also communicating. And so 
Uh, when humans are uh, energizing fear and uh, destruction, then those things uh, like the dust bunnies aggregating beneath the bed, they become uh, larger and larger. When we understand the power of the mind, speech, and view, we may transform and transmute uh, whatever looks like an obstacle. So uh, there's a fine line because I know some people think we, um, and it works for people. Uh, some people begin their stepping onto the road by affirming, I'm going to get on the road by making an affirmation that I will not be angry at a person, or making the affirmation that I will uh, walk upon the road and begin to understand what is happening, or they may have the thought, I wish to be a spiritual being, or I wish to understand. And that impulse then brings people through the layers where you begin to see, oh, this thing I call I, this I that wants this or that. Um, it is not existing by itself. It's in relationship to parents, family, clan, the land. And it's also in relationship to patterns of thinking and behavior. <coughs> so then one goes another level up the mountain or as Grandfather Joe Washington would speak about the salmon going upstream. And so human beings, first uh, the salmon are in this wondrous, beautiful lake. It is a, a beautiful, clear lake. It is cool and it reflects the open sky. And the time comes, the salmon flow down the stream and into the ocean. And are we any different as we swim into the ocean of experience? And then, a certain time, a cycle, they go back from the ocean. So many less return than those who entered the ocean. And those that return to their lake, they must first leap waterfalls, shoals of forgiveness. They must... Um, move over rocks of forgetfulness. They must leap over waterfalls of forgetfulness. They must avoid the gaping mouth of the bear and the mind of greed. Uh, and ultimately, the salmon make their way back to the lake. Those few that do uh, observe the beauty of the sky and they are uh, they mate, and they spawn, and uh, they pass on, and they've shared with that lake the experience of the ocean. And so we are actually no different. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, geologists show that over the last 250 million years that the Earth goes through lots of different cycles. Uh-huh. It appears like uh, we're approaching that place where I think they say every 12,000 years that there's changes. Mm -hmm. um, especially now where the, our solar system is moving closer to the equator of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. So this is, they say, increasing gamma rays, that's increasing solar activity, that's changing the magnetic field of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that it's increasing our potential as spiritual beings, mm -hmm. do we have the capacity to change that cycle in the Earth? Oh, yes. And in some ways, when you actually measure in terms of time the cycle, it has been lengthened. We are actually beyond uh, the previous cycles of uh, glaciation. 
And so what has made that change? Uh, the evolving a consciousness of all beings. And so it is also the Earth and our solar system and our galaxy that are evolving. Yeah, I, I don't uh, buy into end times. Yeah. Well, I, I think what, what I've read is that some of the indigenous people, like the Koji people, as an example, mm-hmm. are saying that we actually shift our world shift into another dimension. Yes. And not, um, well, that's an interesting phenomenon. It certainly is. Uh, to recognize that um, just as the duodecahedron can be seen as a star, also our understanding and our expression may be seen as multidimensional. And when you dream or when you have a sense of deja vu, you are touching those uh, uh, tenuous membranes. And yes, we are shifting, and that is also what the Cherokee say, that it is not about destruction. It is about um, expanded awareness, our body-mind shifts. And some people will not even know they will still be uh, relating to an old view, as I was told, and others will, like a basket surrounding Uh, fabric of light will be vibrating in another plane. Like some people hear um, a certain sound in a chord, some may just hear the the tonic, others may hear the fifth, uh, even others hear the ninth. And so in the same way, people's perception uh, may not notice Even now, all this is occurring. Uh, There are ghosts, there are many types of beings, there are um, subtle beings that most people don't notice and others do. And so, uh, yes, our consciousness shifts through the dissolving of the concept that this or that does or does not exist. Is clear? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my friend singing. I just a minute. We we are. We we are yep. Yes. So in the in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. And then, as you know, I work with A Course in Miracles, and there it says, ask and it is given because it already has been given. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's what you're saying. It's already been given. And for us to remember, to awaken, to clarify so that we recognize that, mm-hmm. and then express it, reveal it, share it. So what about asking for divine Yeah, sometimes you really need help. And uh, people tell me that uh, when they were in uh, dire straits, uh, they called upon whatever understands, whether it is a higher power, uh, people call, and uh, they have a response.
My understanding is the ideal of the north direction has underbirds and the your take or yes. the lightning grid. Uh huh. I would just like to know more about it in terms of uh, this maybe the geometry or something about more about it. Well, the lightning grid work as you uh, observe it. It is, the lines are like two duodecahedrons that, oh no, du two duodecahedrons and then a cosmohedron that are superimposed one upon the other. And uh, the lightning grid work uh, corresponds to the nervous system uh, of the Earth and the people, uh, and also is part of the nervous system of the whole solar system. Uh, so, uh, also there are certain places where lightning is more uh, abundant, and those places are uh, important places of vitality, and also uh, points of stabilization. So in the northern hemisphere, the Colorado Plateau, which had five, four, Quakes today of five um, uh, is related to Tibet. Um, and uh, the quakes were driven by, um, or it's a postulation, the quakes are driven by solar flares, and there were four very large uh, coronal mass ejections in the past two days, which um, expand in heat the whole system and also touch the, the core of the Earth. And so there is movement. Um, so that uh, the lightning grid work is, is the nervous system. And it modulates the flow of information. And uh, people and beings uh, are in touch with the environment uh, through the lightning grid work. So the first attention is to the earth as a, a place to sit. Then the water, which flows uh, above and below and around. Uh, then the fire, uh, which gives rise to the earth and all of the appearances. and then one is mindful of the spirals of energy, the threads of the electromagnetic field that support the communication of our solar system. So the uh, lightning grid work is uh, living, changing, and also somewhat impacted by um, the electrical devices humans have created. And um, occasionally, um, when it is, uh, they short out, when it is uh, in uh, opposition to the Earth's energy flows. So there's, like Serpent Mound is a place where and there's a joke in our community because it is actually, we feel, built by our ancestors uh, that um, whenever people go there to videotape or tape record, their cameras, their recorders, their electronic devices all get fried uh, because the, the electrical communication there is... Uh, not accepting of um, frequencies of um, the electric grid and machines that are built with the electric grid. So yeah, uh, lightning grid work is living uh, pattern web of communication that uh, interacts with the energy of each planet in our solar system, and it's um, a moving. Imagine a pattern which has a, 
is it called jacquard? When there are two pad a weave. Does anyone know about it's a jacquard weave? So underneath is the Earth's lightning grid work, and above this is the electro the heliosphere, the electromagnetic sphere of our solar system, and they are interweaving. They're interwoven, and that is what energizes the core of the Earth. And when we are perceptive, uh, energizes us. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. So just one um, other aspect. Then uh, what's coming to mind is: Does any of this interact also with the core metal? Because mm-hmm. I was concerned. I don't know with the strip mining and gold and taking out mm-hmm. metals because for some reason I feel the charges would be clearer amped with something to do with the metals of the earth. Very good insight. Uh, according to the Hopi, and it is proven true, and again the Colorado Plateau very significant in terms of balancing our solar system as well as the Tibetan Plateau. Uh, There is uranium in the southwest and is covered by coal uh, in its natural state. And the coal, as a cap over the uranium, ameliorates any uh, unhealthy uh, dissonance that would arise from the uranium. When the coal is mined, taken away, Mind, my grandchildren told me to enunciate more carefully. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So when the coal is taken away and the uranium is there, it is uh, creating greater dissonance in the electromagnetic field and the atmosphere of the Earth. Um, and That's a fact, and uh, so people uh, make ceremonies to uh, create a latest work of light, uh, prayerfully weaving a net, because all appearances arise from mind, over these places that have the potential to cause harm. So... Uh, these are some ways in which uh, people apply the potential of the mind in uh, appreciatively offering uh, thanks for the gift of life and recognizing that the fabric of all appearances is actually woven of our thought and speech, that we have an interrelationship. Um, example, on a very simple level, um, a reporter went to the Southwest and he, he heard about this man who could make rain. And the guy didn't look very how do you say, uh, important to him. And that guy just looked like a, a cowboy and, you know, run-down cowboy boots and a vest and a hat. He's an old Indian. Well, not that old. He was actually, for medicine people, young, which was about 45. That's young. <laughs> Younger than my kids, or most of them. <laughs> Younger than most of my kids. And so this reporter was um, wanting to know, how do you do this? What is it that you do? People say you can bring the rain. I want to know, step by step, how you do. And uh, the guy says, well, come on, we'll just go out. And they go out to a place, and uh, the, um, they stand, and the reporter's got his pad in hand, and he's looking around. Well, are you going to dance? Are you going to sing? Are you going to do something? And the Indian reaches in his pocket, and he takes out a pack of Marlboros. He lights them, and the reporter says, What are you doing that for? 
And he just went to the four directions and he walks around and he says, let's go eat. And uh, the reporter is indignant. He's thinking, I wasted all my time coming out here to talk to a so-called rainmaker. And uh, they're in the restaurant and it starts to rain. And he says, well, what did you do? He said, I didn't ask for anything. I just said I am so thankful for her, and I felt the rain on my skin. And, of course, it's that simple. (laughs) 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 So, Barry, you had a question? Yeah, one quick comment and a question. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And they make the point in all kinds of different ways that the behavior of the human race has ushered in elemental changes of geologic proportion. Yep. So there are those who will say that in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. Actually, the endocrine system is, in every human being is nurtured by the light. That uh, particular colors nurture uh, certain endocrine glands, and I think I wrote it down here. Hopefully. Um, so violet is the pituitary. And uh, the others I will um, need to remember because I haven't taught it for a long time. Um, So our body is sustained by light, not just the light that photosynthesizes and becomes food. Directly, uh, our eyes, our cheeks, our sternum receive light, and this Uh, sustains us. And then there is invisible light that also sustains us. Um, So yes, I was alluding to that. And the wisdom eye uh, only opens the eye of penetrating insight when there has been clarification of three channels, then uh, three uh, on each side of those three channels. Yeah, you ask a question, you'll get more. Yeah. So, uh, to, to open the wisdom, I first is to uh, allow 
the vibration to move through the sinuses and to uh, keep the spine supple, to keep the body supple so that the cranial sacral pulse is harmonizing with the pulse of the earth, and awareness, mindfulness of the light that feeds our endocrine system. And our receptivity to that light is uh, energized by our heart awareness. And so in some practices, as you know, our mother and father meet at the heart. And that is symbolic of and a pathway to realization of the clear insight. So in August, I will go in more detail when we're doing the Vajra Dakini retreat, Vajra Yogini retreat. Any more questions? Uh huh. Yeah. I've heard it said that the um, the soul actually um, is is residing in the cranium, mm-hmm. head, and the pineal, and that <clears throat> there's a process where the soul can you can facilitate the movement of the soul from the cranium, from the pineal into the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems that the, when, when, um, when you were talking about the difficulties we get into in, in terms of the mind, and even to actually try to manifest something through the mind, um, it creates a problem because it's not coming from, it's coming from the illusory self, mm-hmm. not from the place of the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's <laughs> it's said that if you if there's the, if you can move the soul from the mind from the cranium into the heart, then you would be a true expression of consciousness being performed. Mm-hmm. Well, the star weaving is to um, integrate the wisdom that is directly. Uh, flowing through the pranayal and the pituitary and the uh, uh, amygdala. Um, So um, I don't know about soul. I know about uh, energy and when uh, and there's mind and there's layers of the human being, like when there's the physical body, uh, when someone passes, there's uh, a quality and energy field uh, that leaves, and there's an emotional field. There, there are up to five different bodies that one uh, expresses through. And uh, they have different names according to different cultures. Uh, they don't exist by themselves. They are like overtones, and the spark of their arising is the seed of awakened mind that explores. So when we do the star weaving, it's to to recognize that. Um, And to understand that it is not outside this wisdom, that the human body is a vehicle that um, is energized by this profound wisdom and to allow it to be expressed, we dedicate ourselves 
but it may be expressed through our thought, our word, our action that all may recall. And uh, the exercise of sensing your relationship, your breath, with the trees and the environment was to uh, just remind you of what you already know. That yes, uh, you are connected. We are all connected. And the state of understanding is truly uh, in our heart, direct perception. Any questions online? No. All right. So, um, I invite you to create the geometric shapes. Uh, the materials are in the... Uh, thank you. And uh, Steve, the star? Okay. We'll get the star back here. Yeah. And we'll uh, leave it here that people can take a look at it. I was trying to do that too much. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, yeah. So I invite you uh, until dinner to uh, have a quiet mind of observation. Uh, what reveals itself, neither reach for it nor push it away. See it as it is. And allow the exploration of building the geometric shape be a mirror of your minds and all of potential. So you can have fun. So, mm -hmm. so we dedicate the merit earned in this and all lives to the attainment of Buddha mind and the release of all sentient beings from suffering. We dedicate the merit earned in this and all lives to the attainment of Buddha mind and the release of all sentient beings from suffering. We dedicate the merit earned in this and all lives to the attainment of Buddha mind and the release of all sentient beings from suffering. Great lady of the Buddha families, who holds the secret Vajrayana, in the lotus grove of the teachings of the practice lineage, you are the glory of the Buddha's teachings and of sentient beings. Blessed are the Vajrayana may your life come on you every day Ah. Violet pituitary, indigo penile, blue thyroid, green thymus, yellow adrenals, orange gonads, red heart and blood. Heart and blood. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kenma. Yes, thank you. Yeah. What kind of fruit? Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Since we are online a little earlier, it would be really helpful if people could scan in um, prior to the 10 o'clock start. You have the mic. And also, okay. um, it would be great if after the session, we, um, it's wonderful that we have good camaraderie and we're asking people to please. Thank you. Thank you.